he didn't expect anybody to live it. That's just his, his thing. But, you know, tell me what other surfers were still talking about. Nobody. So, thank you. Oh, hey, a question. A question. In a, in a room full of journalists, that's pretty scary. But, um, you know, you talked about this fine line. I want to know about your process writing this book as a journalist, because you talked about Mr. Dory being a hero of yours. But there was this very definite dark side of him. He well, was a scammer and a jerk. So then how do you maintain your integrity in writing the truth there? That's number one. And number two, I think that Mr. Dora himself was probably really ambivalent about a book like this. He wanted to be seen as a hero. He wanted to be written about, but he didn't want certain things to come out. So. Well, I think you nailed it. I mean, uh, and I, I'm going to ask for some help here. But my process as a journalist is I like to do oral histories. I like to listen to people. I like to write up to the audience. I want you to make your own judgments. I don't have an opinion, really. I'm romantic about Mickey, but I'm also really sober. I, 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 I felt that you know there were so many different points of view about the guy that you had to, you know, you had to keep them all in your head at once. Uh, I didn't feel it was fair to, to try to really figure him out because I felt that mystery and mystique was essential to the definition of who he was. So my process was, I mean. Uh, I interviewed 300 people, and I wove together the strands. A lot of good stuff got left on the cutting room floor. Um, I just made sure it wasn't about anybody else's story, you know. Although I could have gone into many people's stories. This book was originally eight, nine hundred pages long, but you know, we want this. Uh, to, we want to read this, not use this for a, a, a log in the fireplace at Christmas. Um, so, so I don't know if that explains my process. But uh, as for Mickey, well, I mean. Jerry, are you here? Right here. Okay. Uh, Jerry knew Mickey pretty well. I want to say something after you, too, after you're done. You want to? Yeah, after, I'll get the mic after you. You're going to tell me how you call me up and lie to me about the other things you said? I'm yeah. Mickey's buddy, man. He says, call Renson and feed him some lies. I'm, you know, all over it. And one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, I think, personally, after all the investigation I've done, and you know Mickey asked you to write a book with him, right? He wanted me to write for a long time, and I finally got sick of him talking about it. I just said, hey, look, I don't want to do it. You know, I mean, though, though I, I, he, you know, Damien did a much better job than I could ever do. I'll tell you that right now, you know. But uh, I kind of, after reading the book, I'm kind of looking at all the parts where they didn't have a writer. I mean, I kind of thought he brought me in to kill the deal, really. You know, is what I kind of figured out. It was, uh, you know, so I, I read in the book, uh, you know, all these deals that were going in the, uh, in, when he was in Beer Ritz, and, uh, you know, I could have been in all those and killed all those deals, which were, you know, he just wanted to get his, you know, if he was going to do it, he had a matter of pride. If we're going to do this project, you're going to get my buddy in here. And he knows that, you know, I mean, I had a couple of credentials, but not, you know, not, I, I could have never done anything like this book. Mickey, Mickey constantly entertained movie and book and documentary ideas, mostly with the intention of not doing them. Sort of, I think he knew in advance that no one was going to satisfy his need to be able to control the project. Because, in fact, a guy who doesn't work and who doesn't tell you about his bank account and who lives on the kindness of strangers and his surfing credentials can't have bad publicity of preceding him. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that there's lots of room for other than bad publicity, but, you know, the. If you think somebody's going to be looking through your drawers and maybe taking your passport, you know, you know, uh, uh, it probably you think twice about asking them to s spend the night. Um, but, but you know, that was only a while for Mickey. I mean, after he got out of jail in the early '80s and he had many years left, he did he he quit the larcenous phase of his life, as far as I know, and and started the litigious phase, <laughs> which was you can't put that story out about me. Um, and, you know, but he wasn't very successful at that either. Um, so, yeah, do, I personally think that Mickey would have told you that he didn't want this book. And not only even particularly this book, uh, but I think that he would have loved having it. He would have loved having something that he secretly liked, that he could put down. You know, he wanted plausible deniability. 
He said the vultures will pick at my bones. You know, uh, but you know something? He knew he had pancreatic cancer. He knew he was going home to die. He left a treasure trove of stuff in France and in other places. He could have said, burn it, throw it away. He didn't. He left the evidence. To me, that is basically saying, throwing the gauntlet down. And so I did it. And I figure it's really ironic that a valley surfer wrote Mickey's biography. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that he might have liked it. I don't know. The Craig Stesic lives in the valley. Does he now? Well, he did it. It's his, you know, <laughs> the Craig Stesic really has a different point of view. He's more like Mickey, you know, in the sense that he, it's the art world. I mean, I can't even get to that point. So I don't, look, Craig Stesic had years to write the book, and other people did too. They didn't. Yeah. So. The book's on sale, remember? Oh, the book's on sale, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my, I always exactly. want his book, but you should buy his book because it's great, and they're over there on sale. There's still yeah, so that's what I have nothing to say now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. As a non-surfer and a non-journalist, non 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 is there any film footage of him? And is it possible for surfers or, or even a non-surfer to be able to see how great he was? Oh, yeah. There's yeah. film footage if you look at some of the old movies called... Um, Oh God, the Frankie Avalon movies. Yeah. Yeah. Frank 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 oh, you see the background of Frankie Avalon. He's got the surfing car. He's got the hands of the original beast flank of Bingo. He's got a beard and everything. In Ride the Wild Surf, he's doubling for James Darren. But he's also in Surfers the Movie. There's a thing about him in Endless Summer. There's there's a tape uh, shot by Grant Roloff and some other people. There's footage. There, It's out there, you know? The Golden Breed is a surf film that has some of them. They get yeah. the real old 50s one and just look on the list and it'll say, surfing by so and so, so and so, fill it with Vicky Dora. You know, you'll but, see those. Yeah. You look at the old 50s. You go online, you'll find clips. Yeah, there's plenty. And you can tell that he's an astronaut. Oh, you can tell. It's it's absolutely astounding. Doug. I'm sorry, since Dale Davis's name was mentioned, I interviewed Dale Davis before he died. And he told me he caught Mickey stealing change out of his little sister's piggy bank. Now it's time to check your wallet. So that's the guy who pointed out our books. The guy with the sign books. Oh no, well just just that everyone should, um, thank you for coming everybody and you can buy David's book over there from the guy in the sort of beard. From the bookstore. So thank you. Raise your hand. There you go. Thank you so much.